We will start in a demo with the preparation steps. We need a clone user with some privileges. We need a database link going from the target CDB into the source CDB. And then we will run auto upgrade. So let me start here with the source CDB. So we have the clone user here, C sharp sharp org, and the clone user needs some privileges. In addition, I do a listener setup correctly here. If your listener set up correctly, you don't need that. So this is in a script I call setup.sql. I execute it. Now the things are created in my CDB dollar root in the source and in the target CDB, I create now the database link going back, utilizing that user. So start link will create a database link. Then I have a config file. So my source is 12.1, my target is 19C. My source CDB is a 12.1 CDB1 with one PDB. And I'm going to my target CDB. This is CDB2 in my 19 environment. Very important, this database link is key. And you see the 60. That means every 60 seconds do a refresh for 10 minutes before you start the upgrade. The PDB keeps its name, it's still called PDB3, and I would like to have the files move to have a seamless rollback in case of a failure. Now I start auto upgrade, and the first step is that we do an analyze. So let us do an analyze here, and the analyze completes very, very fast. Here is the result of the analyze, all good. And so I can run the fix ups. This is important here because as part of the refreshable clone, auto upgrade does not run the fix ups automatically. So I need to run it. Let me check here the chop 101 and we run the free fix ups in the source PDB3 here. And quickly after the fix ups finish as well. And now it's time to start the deploy. And this will now create a copy, a refreshable clone, and roll forward or refresh forward for 10 minutes because that's what I defined in my start time here. The remote is there. We can have a look at the locks because I don't want to type LSJ all the time. So I quickly climbed down into the depth of auto upgrade locks. There's this state HTML and I will pass this onto my browser and it auto refreshes itself. So I don't have to do anything. I can just sit there and watch it from now on. While auto upgrade is doing something, I hit return and do a quick check with LSJ again. And it says, yeah, it starts in eight minutes because I defined start time plus 10 minutes. So the idea is every 60 seconds, it does now a refresh. Let us monitor this in the alert lock. That is the safest place. And you see at 21.39, there's a refresh triggered and this completed just a second later. And while we watch that with a tail minus F, we'll see a minute later, there's a refresh happening again and it's completed again. And we can watch this now for a while and see how it refreshes forward. But meanwhile, I would like to create something in my source PDB. So I connect to my PDB3 on the source, create Scott. Scott was missing here. Give Scott some useful privileges, create a table and insert a row into this table owned by Scott. Back to the alert lock. And here we see a minute later, 2141, 42, and so forth. So I scroll here a little bit forward and we will see every minute this refresh is now happening because I define it that way. Now 46 here, 47, and at some point the upgrade will start. And here it is. Now you see there's a change, there's no refresh. Auto upgrade has done the final refresh and then started the upgrade. Let us check here, status minus chop 102. And it's in upgrade mode. And now I go back to my browser page because this is why I opened it. So we will now safely lean back and relax. And of course I do a little bit of fast forwarding here because nobody wants to watch for 13 minutes. We see 23%, 37, 39, 91. And then the upgrade is done. So unplug work, post checks if needed, and finally completed. That's it. You don't trust me? Let's have a look and connect to my 19C PDB now. Alder session set container PDB3, select star from Scott Turbines. 
here it is. So you see, this is really no rocket science. And it's so smooth. It's really cool. And you avoid all the copy time. Just think your source PDB is six terabytes and you would need to copy it over until you can start the upgrade. So you determine the synchronization point. That's really, really good. And the best thing is the source PDB stays intact all the time so you can safely roll back to the source. And of course you want to test this several times. So for testing, this is an ideal situation here. Really, really helpful.